Hi again everyone, I'm Ali Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Victoria. This is a follow-up to address my narc mother's suspected shoplifting at Macy's in New York from the video, The Narcissist Will Never Deem You Worthy. My narc mother was often out shopping and she only liked department stores, not small stores. Her local Macy's on Long Island was her favorite and she frequented a nearby Lord & Taylor as well. She also went to a Macy's at an upscale mall and sometimes Macy's Herald Square. She lived the quick easy ride away <clears throat> on public transit from Herald Square. Probably the upscale mall, if it's on Long Island, would either have been Roosevelt or Manhasset or um, in Jersey. But the uh, I'm thinking it's probably Short Hills in New Jersey. That's the real upscale one. I have no idea how often she was there because I moved out in late 2003. When I visited her home, she had tons of new clothes, jewelry, shoes, bags. I assumed she just had credit card bills. The couple of times per year I agreed to visit her, she always wanted to go to Macy's Herald Square. She didn't have anything in particular she was looking to buy. She just wanted to wander around, mostly in the jewelry department. <laughs> oh, main floor broad. That's my store, jewelry. And I think we got your mother's. It probably was costume jewelry we caught her, caught her stealing. At least twice that I can remember in the late in the late 2000s or early teens, she nagged me relentlessly to buy something. Uh-oh. I said I didn't need anything, but she kept nagging and said I can't be walking around the store without buying something. Okay. She was trying to get you to buy something so you would have a receipt while she boosted. And then if she was caught at the door, what she would say is, oh, I told her to buy this. What, well, you didn't purchase this? And... See, look, she's got her seat. It wouldn't have worked, but this is what she was doing. <laughs> I'm like, this is what she, this is what she was doing. It seems strange at the time, but I wrote it off as one of her many bizarre behaviors. It didn't matter what I bought as so long as I stood in line and got my credit card swiped. Exactly. Because she wanted the receipt. She wanted that receipt. So she can hand it to the, if she got stopped at the door. That's what she wanted. I brought something each, I bought something each time just to get her to stop nagging. And boy, she would have tried to throw you under the bus if she got caught. She would have blamed it on you, said I told you to buy it. She would, it would have been your fault. <laughs> they set you up the whole time. In retrospect, was this the cover for shoplifting? Yes. <laughs> I have never shoplifted, so I don't know what these criminal tactics are. Oh, those are one of them. That's one of them. That's a big one. Do they purchase something and steal a bunch of other stuff to try to cover up that they're stealing? So a lot of times, yeah, you'll you'll catch them. You'll catch them stealing a couple items, and then they'll say, they'll pull out a receipt, and they're like, I bought all this. Why would I buy all of this and then steal these few items? I don't know, but you did. Because it's not about what you bought. It's about what you left with, stupid. See, and that's really the narcissist entitlement. I gave you this much money. What are you complaining about these couple items for? That's the narcissist. So in retrospect for my own sound, I mean, that's basically what I, I did for 20 years of my life was just basically chasing around entitled narcissists who've been stealing from us our entire lives. Do they, do they take someone else with them and insist that person makes a purchase so the store won't be suspicious of them stealing? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what they do. And so when they're stopped at the door, she would say, oh, I told her to pay, to pay for them and I gave them to her. I don't know. I don't know. That's how that works. That's how that works. Macy's Herald Square is extremely crowded, loud, chaotic, and overflowing with merchandise like a hoarder house. The elevators and ancient escalators are painfully slow. No shit. See, and Macy's Herald Square on the Broadway side because it's two buildings, 7th Ave and Broadway. The Broadway building still has the wooden escalators. So, I mean, there are I mean, there are wood escalators made of wood 
with machines, but you can hear the machine running them. And when you're on them, they go boom, boom, boom. There you are, loud and shaky, and the elevators aren't much better, but they're they're antiques, so they're kept. It's the most unpleasant shopping experience imaginable, and I don't shop there. Yet Joan insisted we go. Who knows how often she was there by herself. Here's a better picture of her face from the late 2000s. Is this her? I'm embarrassed, but laughing at the same time. If this is her, it's too funny not to let the subscribers know so that they can have a laugh. Thanks, Victoria. And you just sent me something else. Yes, that's her. <laughs> yeah, that's her. <laughs> Oh, I remember her entitled face <laughs> telling me about how much money she had. <laughs> she didn't need this. I don't, I didn't catch her. I was, at that point, I was a senior director, so I would just sign off on the cases. Um, I definitely talked to her because I was, a, I was in charge of the detectives back then, but I didn't necessarily dis disposition her case. If I did, she def I definitely would have locked her up. I definitely would have sent her to jail. So you might want to check and run her name and, and see if she has any shoplifting arrests. But, oh boy, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember her. And I'm pretty sure it was um, fashion jewelry she got picked up for. A few hundred bucks, in fact. And you sent me an addendum just as I was reading this. <clears throat> Okay. I have one more addendum that can be public about the Baroness. You guessed that whoever is closest to the Baroness gets the money, and that's the son husband who lives with her, pretty much. This is not the preacher, it's the other one. The public property records show a transfer of ownership on her house for zero dollars shortly before I got married. I assume it's the son husband who lives with her. Who own who now owns the house? Uh, might be the preacher because if it went to the preacher, he might be able to get over on the taxes by calling it a church in some way. If he's a preacher, I don't know if they. That might be why it's for zero dollars. I I bet they gave it to the preacher brother, not the other one. All is a tax shelter. I don't know if they have any cash or they spent it all. That son husband eventually started asking other relatives for money, saying he could no longer afford his lifestyle. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> the entitlement is the entitlement on these people, man. There was also a vacation house on an exclusive island at some point and a Greenwich Village apartment. Who knows how many other properties they had, but these people spend money like spend like money grows on trees. There's tons of stuff in Baroness's house to potentially liquidate for cash, like art, jewelry, antiques, and who knows what else. My father told me he's been planning for years to sue his brother when the Baroness dies and try to get some of the money or just mess with him. Baroness is 98. She can't live forever, right? I may not find out when she dies or what happens with all this, but I kind of hope. But I kind of ho of hope I do, just so I can send this story to your channel, <clears throat> Victoria. <clears throat> I would be careful with your dad. Tell your dad to be careful, trying to get involved with these people, because who knows? It sounds like they probably spent every cent she has anyway, and when she dies, she's going to be so in up. The estate's probably going to be underwater, and your father or him are not going to want anything to do with it. I would think, though, that the house probably went to the preacher brother. Because if he did it under the guise of a church or something, no taxes. It's all tax-free. Who knows? But no, she can't live forever, but she can, she can make everybody's life miserable through her will, which is what she's been doing. So, good times. But yeah. Um, your mother was trying to use you as cover in case she got arrested. So congratulations with that. And yeah, that's, that's her. So 
Thank you for another contribution and story, though. I do appreciate it, and thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it growing, expanding, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.